So in a previous upload on could I teach myself how to tint via, you know, watching YouTube videos, at the end of that video, we saw how bad my window was, you know, and I've got quite a few bubbles on this all over. And the plan of action is to remove this window tint and fit a lovely new window tint, a nice fresh tint. So here we are. I've gone ahead and I've put a black bag on the back of the window. Uh, I sprayed it with some uh, soapy water and whatnot, just so that black bag sticks to it. And that window is so hot. You can't, you, well, you can touch it, but it's it's extremely hot because that black bag on the other side is um, is drawing the sunlight. So yeah, it's um, it's it's very hot that glass. And apparently, this is one of the tips and tricks to help remove window tint. So yeah, there's the bin liner there. I'm going to pull that straight off. And then we'll see if it does make removing the glue and the tint any easier. So you remember just a moment ago how bad those bubbles were. It seems to have fixed a lot of the bubbles on the window doing that. Um, I wonder if that's a hack. You know, just putting a black bag on the back over your window and shrink those bubbles back out of it. Because <laughs> that window, it looks so much better than what it did originally. That's, um, that's pretty mad. So the plan of action is remove this tint and then once we've got the tint off I'm going to go ahead and give it all a good clean up and we'll get all the glue off and we should be able to hopefully get the window tinted today Right, so I've gone ahead, I've cleaned up half the window already, removed half the glue on one side. The other side you can see is the glue still there. But it does make removing the glue a lot easier when that tint's warm. Because when I removed some tint on a previous window, I'd done my mate's T4, when the tint was just cold, the glue was quite thick and quite hard to get off. This glue, um, I don't know if different tints have different glues or whatnot, I, I really don't know, but it really doesn't smell very pleasant, this one. And just using the soapy water, it reacts. So I'll spray some more on. And you can see straight away, that soapy water has reacted and it makes that glue so much easier to come off. The only thing is, is that you do go through a couple of scaras or scaras, whatever they're called, those little, um, those little Brillo pads. Right, so once it's all cleaned up, the window is absolutely spotless on the inside. I've cleaned the outside of the window as well. The windows are very, very clean because the last thing I want is to get any contamination into the tint and it behind the film, in between the film and the glass, and that's going to cause specks. So we don't want any of that at all. So I'm just going to head here what I'm doing here is a bit of talc powder on a towel, a bit of paper towel, dry paper towel. And we're just making sure everything is dry, bone dry that window. And also the talc powder helps the film float on the glass. So it, it gives that the, the film the freedom to move around as you try and shrink it. So we just go ahead, make sure there's plenty of talc all over it, make sure the window's nice and dry. And then once we're happy that it's nice and dry, we're just going to blow off all the, any loose dust, any excess talc and powder. But as you can see, I haven't really put a great deal on the paper towel, so there's not really a lot to blow off. Uh, just a couple of bits around the stickers, which you'll see later on, those stickers cause me a little bit of a problem. 
I mean, this is only because I am new to tinting. This is only um, the second rear window that I have done. All the others have been small side windows or small rear barn door windows or, you know, so I haven't had to do any real big rear windows until now. This being the second one. The first one I've done the Vectra. But, yeah, the idea now is to get that bit of tissue, now soak it with loads of soapy water, and then just going to make an H pattern across the rear window. So two wet lines straight down either side, and then one straight through the middle. Now, depending on where you put that straight line across the middle, depends on where the majority of your shrink is going to be. I want the majority of my shrink to be at the bottom of the window. So as you can see, my, my half line going across the middle of the window is quite high. And with that being quite high, it means there's going to be more material below that line, which will need shrinking. And above that line, there will be less material to shrink. So, you know, if you want to do it the opposite way around and you want to shrink more at the top, then have a lower line. But, yeah, it's, it's all down to you. So here, what I've done is uh, I, I previously cut out of, of, of some of the film down to size, roughly down to size, I, I did round the edges off a little bit as well. So I cut it all down to size, I rolled it all up, and then uh, I put it back into the car so that when I went ahead to do this, we didn't have to waste time with me pulling it out of the film and cutting it all down and showing you all of that, because I'm sure you all know how to pull some film out of a roll and <laughs> and cut it. But, yeah, so this bit here, we're just going to stick it down onto the window to make sure it is nice and flat, and then we're going to go ahead and shrink it. But you'll see, this is, like I said, this is only the second rear window that I've done. Um, and all the shrinking that I've done on side windows isn't really a massive amount of shrinking. So, yeah, rear windows, you tend to have more of a curvature on them. Even though this window looks pretty flat when you just look at it. But, yeah, there's still a curve on it. There's still quite a curve on it. Now, the only downside to using the talcum powder, because it is really good... Um, and it really does help the material float around on the windscreen as you shrink it. So you have less chance of getting any creases. That is, that's what I found anyway. Using the talcum powder, less chance of creases. Um, because you can do it with soapy water and shrink with soapy water. But doing it that way, I found it's a lot easier to not shrink enough and then cause a crease. So doing it with the talcum powder, I mean, I think you can do it with uh, dry soap. Um, and rubbing a soap bar over it but you just want that film to be able to move around on the window but yeah like I was saying there is a downside to using the talc especially if you're outside um, well there's two downers about using talc uh, the first being outside is that it's um, <laughs> a real strong gust of wind and that can take that film away pretty easily so you want to make sure that where it, where you put those H lines where it's wet that you put a bit of pressure, apply some pressure to the film so that the film sticks to the window. I mean, even doing that, I still had the occasional gust that will take the, f that the film away from the glass. But yeah, you can see how that film moves around quite easy over the talc. Obviously, it sticks where you've removed the talc um, so that the, the film will stick to the windows where you put those, those that H line. So I'm just going to go ahead flatten it all out, make sure I'm happy. I am taking my time because, you know, being a novice, you want to take your time. You don't want to rush these things. And, uh, yeah, just take your time, get everything lined up, make sure that you've got all the stretching to be done at the top and the bottom because the film only stretches uh, up and down. So, yeah, make sure you get those sides nice and tight, nice and straight so there's no fingers really coming out of there. And then... Um, yeah, I sort of like angle rounds to the, you know, to the inside of the window. As I come down to the bottom, I go round to the inside of the window and try and get like all the creases and all that loose film into the centre, into the middle, so we can shrink it all down. Now you can see here when I first start to shrink, what I'm doing is I'm starting in the middle of the window, um, trying to remove as much of the excess material by shrinking it down to size uh, starting from the middle working my way outwards well from the center down or center up depending on where you want to start 
and I'm just going to sort of like do one half of the window at the time do bottom half and then the top half um, but you can see here those stickers are already going to start causing me grief so yeah halfway through I do actually have to stop and remove those stickers and I've kind of skipped through that a little bit we'll um, we'll cut that out because I think that was like 10 minutes just taking the wind oh it was hassle it was hassle so but as I'm shrinking it you can see how well that film moves over the window now when you're if you're doing it wet with soapy water it's great it will move around to start off with but eventually it'll start to dry out and it will stick um, and if it's that's how it can catch you out if you're not experienced I mean I'm not experienced so that will catch me out so using talcum powder is actually quite a good little um little trick but then there's the second downside to talcum powder which i was going to tell you about and that is the excess dust afterwards so once you've done your tint you will find that you're going to have to rinse everything off really well to make sure that there's no talc no dust that can potentially get in between the window and the film and cause imperfections and impurities which we want to try and avoid at all costs so the size of material that i actually cut for the film i pre-cut the material down to the height top to bottom 53 centimeters and from side to side left to right i cut that down to 135 centimeters and that gave me a square film that went over the window and then I just trimmed it down roughly to where we're at at the moment so when it comes to me actually doing the heat shrink here you'll see that all the way through the whole process I've never really although I'm trying to get it get the shrink all the way down to the bottom I'm not really too concerned about the very edge because I still need to do a final cut of the film once it's shrunk down to size So there you see it, the wind. I didn't see it in time, but I did catch it in time. Well, I said I caught it in time, I didn't really because it did put a little crease in, which I'm about to point out just there, put a tiny little crease in. And then I did see another one um, a little bit lower as I was doing this, I saw another tiny one. Um, just there, there was the other crease. However, before when i've done these i had these little tiny little creases i was i was uh disheartened on my first few attempts on the vectra when i tried that um and i gave up i didn't even bother trying to fit the film this time i actually just didn't bother i was like yeah i've got to cut the creases it's not my fault it was the wind we'll carry on and see what happens well i can tell you now that those little creases they didn't show up at all that there's no there's no crease there at all it's pretty good so um i'm pretty happy with that so you know although the wind can be you know a bit annoying and cause you grief uh it's not always that much of a nightmare if it does give you a tiny little crease no no I, the crease was very tiny you know it was millimeter you know not even millimeters just like one mil it was tiny tiny little one um, crease which yeah it's gone but you can see through this whole process while I'm shrinking it, I'm actually using my fingers to start off with. And it will be quite a while until I actually get a, uh, get a card out and start using the card to get it flat. Because using my fingers, I can actually make sure that the big fingers, the big spears or whatever you want to call it, the, the parts of the film that need to shrink down, uh, if, it's, um, if you shrink too much, of the film at the top and not enough on the edge then potentially when you go to uh, brush it down with a card in your mind you think you've shrunk it but you probably haven't so using the card you're going to give it a massive big crease so using my hand here just with the heat gun slowly shrinking using my hand I'm able to break down those fingers those spears so that they don't give me grief and don't cause any creases when I do actually use a card on there uh, a little bit later on just to make sure that it is all nice and flat.
but if this was a pro doing this, he would have he would have had this done by now. It'd have been finished. Uh, he would have been heat run. But this is this is real life, isn't it? This is any other guy. This is you, me. This is Tom, Dick, Harry. This is everyone who goes right. Window tinting. It's a you know easy upgrade. It's something that I can do myself. It's you know it looks pretty cool. So yeah, it's it's one of them. Anyone can give it a go, I guess. But just have patience. Take your time, and don't be so disheartened when it doesn't go to plan. I did see in the previous video that I'd done on the window tinting, I had a comment from someone saying that they've been struggling to do the rear window. So if you are watching this, hopefully this will help you just by showing you how to shrink it a little bit and heat shrink the, the window for the T4. Because it's deceiving, it does seem like it's a completely flat window um, until you actually get your film on there, which you can see. And then there's quite a lot of um, curvature on it. So now I'm happy that I've got rid of all of the, you know, how oh, all that excess material that was at the bottom. I'm happy that I'm not going to cause any creases. So that's why I'm now using my little card with the felt edge, um, something nice and soft so that it won't scratch the, well, I say not scratch it because at the moment we are heat shrinking the, um, the sticky side is facing us so we got a plastic sheet there's a yeah there's a protective plastic cover over the window film and that protective plastic cover is on this side so although i don't want to scratch it you know it doesn't really matter that if you scratch it but i don't want to scratch it in case it does actually tear through um to the actual film and then that could potentially cause damage but if you are going to tint yourself, I would take a little strip and just practice a little bit on the corner of heat shrinking. Practice with the heat gun, see what happens when you overheat it, see what happens when you underheat it. And just play around with it and see how the film moves on the window. Uh, because you want to get used to that before you start using the cards like this. Because it's very easy. Like I said before, the film gets warm and then it's so easy to put a crease in it. Um, and it's, it's, it's easy to crease the film anyway, whether it's hot or cold. So you've got to be really careful when you handle the film. Very careful all the time. Now again, this is the part where you see see me with the stickers and I'm trying to, to shrink that bit around there but it just won't have it you can see the shrink line that I've got and that is pretty much where the sticker is um, it's I expect a, a pro would be able to overcome this straight away and go oh yeah what you've got to do is this but I'm not a pro I don't really know uh, and you can see here where the shrink lines are going sideways uh, that means that it's it's shrunk enough um, that's plenty shrunk so yeah, I wouldn't really worry too much when it goes sideways like that. You don't need to shrink it anymore. That is plenty. Yeah, again, so you can see I'm applying heat to it to watch it shrink. And then I'm uh, pushing those shrink marks. Well, yeah, where it shrunk, I'm then pushing that out. And I'm not getting too carried away with the heat because it's very easy to get carried away and just overheat it. Which is why I'm always taking the gun away from the window in case uh, I accidentally overheat one spot on the window. Uh, because you are concentrating on what you're doing on the heat shrink and sometimes, you know, your left hand <laughs> where that heat gun goes is sometimes, you know, you're not really paying too much attention to. So it's a good habit to pull that gun far away whilst you're still learning being a novice and also <laughs> another little tip for you is take that wiper off that wiper gave me so much grief because I didn't take it off just to save myself five minutes and you don't even have to take it off you can just slacken the nut on there and then just release the washer the wiper itself release the wiper and just swing it around a little bit and then push it back against the body of the car but 
I was just too lazy. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, it'll be fine. It won't be in my way, that wiper. It'll be fine. I'll just stick it out. And But no, that wiper was in the way. And if I was to do another T4, um, which no doubt I will be doing a few more of them in the near future, um, yeah, I will be removing that wiper or at least loosening it so that it's not in the way like that because it is a nightmare. And you can see here as I'm heating the top here, how easy the film moves over the window just because it's you know that talc on there has really helped that film just helps it float and just move around which makes it so much easier to shrink and you can see here where I had my um, if you remember at the beginning I put the H mark on the rear window well you can see now that there's less shrinkage on the top because I had that middle line, that center line quite high. And it took me quite a while to do the bottom because obviously I had more to shrink on the bottom of the window than I did on the top of the window. And again, I am just taking my time. I don't want to get carried away and ruin the film and over shrink it. So it is a case of just take my time, um, starting from the middle, working my way up, just getting all those Get, getting it all out and just shrinking it down. Yeah, so here I just removed the stickers with the blade. Um, I skipped all this out because this was a good 10 minutes of just cleaning. But I took the blade to it, cleaned it all up, made sure it was uh, there was no glue or anything left behind. And then I actually went ahead and decided that this bottom corner, um, I'd, I'd wet shrink it because, you know, it's only a little bit that needs to shrink now. And I've already had to get it wet anyway to clean all the... The, 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 to clean that glue off from the stickers. So yeah, there's no harm in doing a little bit of a wet shrink here. So you can see here at this stage, I'm probably about 80% of the way there of, uh, of shrinking the film and making sure that the film is a good fit. Because personally, I think that, you know, preparation is the most important thing because everything that I've done ever in life, it's always about preparation. You always need to be prepared for everything. So yeah, a good prep on all of this should really help um, with, a better, with a better feel, with a better tint afterwards, you know, preparing it all. Yeah, I mean, it's like when you paint, isn't it? You've got to make sure that's all prepped properly. Now you can see here I've squeezed all the excess water out of the edge so it's all nice and flat to the window on that corner. And then I've just made myself two fingers. Um, obviously they need shrinking. Uh, done the same on both sides. And now you can pretty much see I've only got a few areas that need shrinking, just these little corners, which shouldn't take too long. I mean, the amount of time it's gonna take me to shrink these corners, I expect a pro tinter would be able to shrink the whole rear window. But again, like I say, it's just, you know, if you're doing it at home on your own um, and you've got a day to kill, mate, well, you can see how long it's taking. Um, and I think the, the longest bit was getting the glue off. Well, actually, no, the longest bit was probably shrinking it because I didn't realise it took this long. So I left the... What, when I put the bin bag on the rear window, I left the car in the sun for at least an hour or so uh, to get that window really hot. Because while that was obviously in the sun, I was able to get on with other things. And then I come back and here we are. But it's so therapeutic just doing tints, window tints. Because you just, you know, you're, you, you, I, Personally, when I do jobs, I want to do it to not just 
my best of my ability, but I want to try and better myself. <laughs> you know, I want to do an amazing job every single time. It, okay, it doesn't, not everything in life works out that way, but, you know, if I've tried, like, better than what I think I can do, then, mate, I'm buzzing because, well, I've done rear barn doors on a T4, I've done the rear barn doors on a combo, I've done the side windows on a T4, and i also done the rear side windows and rear window on the Vectra C. So, yeah, I've only done a few windows, uh, not many at all. So to be at this stage already is amazing. And I just cannot wait until I can find a unit somewhere, um, hopefully with Matt, and then we can get our own unit and do this together. Well, Matt will be doing his electrics and hopefully I'll be tinting because I actually enjoy this. Very therapeutic. Okay, it's a bit of graft when you've got to clean the glue off from an old tint. Um, I'm not going to lie, it is a bit of scrubbing involved. Pretty much a pig. But it's worth it when you get an outcome that, you know, when it all goes well. It doesn't always go well and my Vectra, I've actually, the windows are pretty poor and I've left them like that as a reminder from where I started. So I can look at the, the T4 and go, look at the T4, that's a professional tint. Look at the Vectra, that's where I started. And I've only done three, five, seven windows, seven other windows since the Vectra to this. So it's not many windows at all. Um, buzzing, mate. So there you go. If you want uh, your windows done, as Matt would say, Twig will pimp you out. And now I think he's saying Twig will tint you out. But either way, Twig will pimp you out, isn't it? <laughs> uh, hashtag get that trending. Twig will pimp you out. That is jokes. <laughs> get your comments down below. Twig will pimp you out. Rah. If that, if, if that went crazy down in the comments, people just saying Twig will pimp you out. That would be bare jokes. <laughs> right, so you can see how fussy I am and how pedantic I can be about things. This window film, this tint, is pretty much perfect. I've seen a lot of professional tinters and they don't even, they don't get it to this stage. They don't have it as flush fitting as this or, I don't know. I, they just seem to go, yeah, no, that's all right, that's good enough, that'll go straight in. And then off they go and they tint and they still get an amazing result, I'm not going to lie, they, you know, because they're professional tinters. I guess they just know when, well, what will work and what won't. But, yeah, no, I'm just going through making sure that it's pretty much perfect. And remember, I'm not really too worried about the very edge because I've still got to go round yet and trim it all down with a blade. Right, so I'm actually using 20% film here. So the 20% means it lets through 20% of light. There is times that if you're gonna be tinting, say a 5% tint, so it only lets in 5% light, you know, a, the darkest of dark tints that you can get. When you're doing them, you will need a light behind the window so you can see where you're cutting. Um, I'm lucky that, yeah, like I say, it's only a 20% tint, so I don't really need to put a torch or any light on the inside. Uh, the car's light enough on the inside. I've got the door open um, and I can see, but that's why I've used my hand there just to shield the reflection and I'm able to see quite clearly where I need to cut to. So very carefully there, I just cut around the brake light. I've only gone over, um, I'm going past like the dot matrix, only by a couple of mil all the way around. Uh, you have a look on the inside first before you do yours. Um, see how much room you've got that you can actually clearly get to the window. Um, because sometimes you can go five mil over the dot matrix line and it'd be fine. But on this, because it's the caravel and I've got all those rear plastics around the rear window, it's very hard and very tricky to 
get your contour, get your tools up in there. So I'm cutting it as fine as I can, as close as I can to the dot matrix, only a couple of mil over. So that way, when I go to install it, um, where it's close to the plastics, it's going to fit really well. I'm not going to get any contamination because it's not going to hit the plastics. It's, it should be a nice snug fit. So just taking my time, going round with the blade. I am using stainless steel blades so that technically they shouldn't scratch the glass. I say shouldn't because anything can happen and it is possible to scratch the windows. Uh, this rear window already has a couple of scratches. I never actually noticed them before until today. Uh, there's a lot of things that I never noticed before until I actually started looking closer. I mean, I just thought it was a rear window that was bad. But it turns out, actually, all my side tints are terrible. When you look at them, there's loads of little white dots on them, which I'd never even noticed. I mean, I've had the van five years, and I've never noticed those little dots on the side windows um, until now. And, and now that I'm tinting, I'm actually noticing all... And I'm just... Yeah, I, I'd never noticed any of these before. So I will be doing all the side windows as well on this van, um, but not yet. I'm not in a rush to do the side windows. I wanted to do the rear window because, as you could tell from the beginning of the video, how terrible the rear window was. So this it, this has to be done. Um, I, and it's a struggle trying to find time to be able to do all the windows because I've got other things to get on with and I'm helping um, other jobs. I've been helping at Trim Porters. I've also been helping Matt and helping other mates as well with their vehicles and doing other bits and pieces. Uh, and hopefully it won't be long and I'll actually be able to start making some money from doing all of this because, uh, yeah, freebies are only for so long and then once my skills are up good enough, there'll be no more freebies. And I think at the moment, um, once you see the end of this, see the results, I think you will, will I, th I think you'll all agree that I will be able to charge a decent rate. Um, even if for now... You know, if I do something that's a bit trickier, I could probably say, oh, well, I don't know, I've never done one of these before. Um, and, you know, maybe do it a little bit cheaper because, you know, it's learning, isn't it? Um, but as for doing T4s, I think I will be... Uh, you know, it's a competitive price, I think, I'll be doing the mat. I mean, especially if Matt got a quote for his windows on his T4, and it is only the side windows, it's a Caravelle. So, yeah, the T4 Caravelle, same as this. It's got the two doors... It's got the two windows on the passenger side and the two windows on the driver's side. So, and he was quoted, I think it was £520 plus VAT. And that was to remove the old tint and to fit and install new tint. Um, he also wanted ceramic tint on the windows, on the front driver's and passenger's window for UV protection. Now, I've had a look into ceramic tints and you can actually get a 80% ceramic tint. And I said to him, I will look into doing the ceramic tints for him on his uh, front and his front windows because there is a, a, a legal limit of only 70% allowed on the front windows. So I need to get some kind of light meter reader so I can see what light is coming through his side windows already and see if he can have the 80% on his side windows. If not, I may have to look into uh, a, a clear film, see if there's some sort of just UV clear, and maybe, um, maybe there is something, I don't know. I need to speak to my suppliers and find out a little bit more because I don't really know a great deal about all this film. It's new to me and I will be, yeah, I, I'm investing in this trade now. So I will speak to the suppliers and uh, we'll look into that. But I've also had inquiries on uh, doing a polo, a bread van. He wants some uh, chrome tint, a silver tint, some privacy tint. So, yeah, I'll be getting some of that. But that's that privacy tint is four times the price. So anyone who does want privacy tint, silver tint, you will be paying premium price for that, I'm afraid. Uh, that's just the way it goes, unfortunately. It's very expensive. Just like carbon, um, not carbon, sorry, just like ceramic, the ceramic tints, that they are very expensive as well they are four times the price as well as just like the silver the privacy tint but the privacy tint if you've got a van and you wanted yours tinted um, that is the way i would go i would get the silver privacy tint 
Um, not because I'm trying to sell it and trying to make more money on it. It's just that, you know, it's privacy tint, isn't it? It's silver, it's chrome, um, and you can't see through it. <laughs> you can't see in at all. And it gives you a little bit of uh, privacy, you know, which is exactly what it is. That's what it's supposed to do. And there's no law for how dark you go on your rear, rear windows. So it's totally fine, you doing that. I mean, look at a lot of vans, the panel vans, they don't have side windows. So yeah, as long as you um, don't tint your front windows, you'll be fine. Right, so now what I'm doing is, I'm just cleaning all of the, all of that talc off from behind. So all that talc that we use to sort of like do the dry shrink, I'm just making sure here that I can wash all of it away absolutely every single little speckle of, of dust that there was because when I done the Vectra this is one thing I didn't do I didn't wash it down properly um, and that was because I didn't have a decent spray bottle I just had a little hand spray bottle um, that you squeeze the trigger every time you wanted some water to squeeze out and that was I mean it was all right it started me off it got me practicing but it's no good for proper tinting um, you need something with a bit of pressure that I've got now, you know, one of these pressure bottles. And that's, that's great for doing this because it sprays in and it cleans all that talc off straight away. And, you know, less chance of contamination, which is what it's all about. You know, you don't want any kind of contamination in it at all. So it's always the way you see right here, just there, the wind blew. Every time you go to do something, the wind, mate, the wind is a dick. You try doing anything out here uh, and the wind just wants to take it away. So, and the worst thing was, was I started to run out of water in the bottle. Um, I've gone through two, two liters so far, um, but that did include cleaning all the glue off the inside of the window. I probably used a good liter or so just trying to clean all that glue off. Right, so on this rear window, what I am going to do is I'm going to do the reverse roll technique uh, because you can see it is quite windy um, and the reverse roll technique, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can explain it too well, so there's probably other people that are better at explaining it than myself. But to practice it, I just had two pieces of paper and just rolled them and practiced how, it, tried to get the logic into my head of how it works. So. Yeah, the plan is, um, if you're right-handed, like I am, you will start on the left-hand side when you do the reverse roll. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna peel away the protective film that covers the tint itself. Now, as soon as I peel this away, it's going to expose the, um, it's going to expose the sticky side, which is very static. And especially where we're outside and it's very windy, it's going to, it's going to want to draw in dirt, a lot of dirt as well. Uh, this is why you want to be inside. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to spray water on it constantly while I peel it back, while I peel that plastic cover back, the protective cover, and that way, hopefully, the water will reduce the static and any dust that does kind of land on there will be able to just wash it away. So I'm just going to do peel it back halfway and do half at a time.
And you can see, you know, as soon as I start doing this, the wind starts picking up. But, you know, you're committed. Once you start doing this kind of job, you've got to sort of like, especially if you're outside, unfortunately, you've got to fight the elements. Um, and that is exactly what I'm doing right here. Yeah, you can see there, look, I lost it. I lost control of the uh, the plastic. The wind took took it away. It's too much. And look at all that exposed sticky area we've got on that rear tint. And that is a lot of area there that's exposed in the wind for quite a few seconds, you know, quite a long period of time. So there's potential now of dust there and a lot of contamination getting into the window tint. So what I'm going to do is, is try and reduce that. I'm just going to spray it down as much as I can and then get that film straight back over there and hopefully don't get any contaminations in it. So now I'm just going to move everything inside into the van that I'm going to need for installation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the reverse roll. So starting on the passenger side for me, because I am right-handed, I'm just going to roll the film up. Now I'm rolling both the protective cover and the actual tint itself. I'm not doing anything special here. It is just getting rolled. And I'm trying to roll it as tight as I can. Now I'm not very good at rolling, so it may take me a while practicing this. I mean, this is, again, like I say, only the second time I've done a rear window. So it's the second time that I've also done the reverse roll. Um, it's going to take some practice, but you know, you don't become a master overnight. So, you know, I will keep practicing every time I do a rear window, I will be doing the reverse roll. And in fact, I think I might actually do the reverse roll on doing side windows on T4s as well, because it just seems because, you know, they are quite big, those side windows. I think they're almost a meter, I think about 80 something centimeters wide, the biggest one. So yeah, the reverse roll. And that's what we do, we just roll it up. <laughs> I say try and keep it as tight as possible. Um, but yeah, you can see it's a bit slack there for me. But at the same time, I'm also trying to roll it up as straight as possible along that bottom edge. So that when I install it, I'm going to install from the bottom, the, that bottom corner. So I've rolled from the passenger side to the driver's side. I'm now going to roll from the driver's side back out to the passenger side. So what I'm going to do is, it once I've got myself uh, comfortable, climbed across the bed and sat up there and cross-legged and everything else, uh, I'm going to spray down the window. Again, I did say I have cleaned the window thoroughly many a times, and it is really clean. But there could be dust on there, so I'm just going to spray everything down, really wet, give it a good soak, so any dust is on there, that will wash off, so we've got a nice clean window. And now what I'm going to do here with the film I'm going to start unrolling it a little bit and then as I unroll it a little bit what I want to do is is that protective cover I want to fold it back on itself I want to roll that protective cover onto the back of the film so then as I unroll the film that protective cover goes from the front of the film to the back of the film now that may take a little while for you to get your head around so a little bit of practice with some paper, right, put, you know, right on the paper and then two bits of paper, face them together and then practice this reverse roll. So now the sticky side is exposed and the clear plastic is now stuck to the back of the um, tint. I'm going to slowly unroll it, just holding it in place where it needs to be. And then once I'm, I've got enough of that roll out, and I'm quite happy that everything's going in nice and straight and everything's looking good. I can slide my hand up a little bit so that it all tucks in. And remember I said that it's only a couple of mil over that I've measured it. That means it goes all the way up to the top corners, up to the top edge, without touching any of the plastics around the van. And then as I get to here, to the end, it's still rolled round a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to search for where the clear plastic is over on the driver's side on the back of the tint and I'm just going to pull that film away the plastic and as I pull that plastic sheet away it will automatically unroll the rest of the tint and it will just roll straight into position 
So now we've got the tint in there, it's just a case of making sure it is all lined up where I wanted it to be, where it was supposed to be. And then we need to get inside the van so that you can see. And then it's a case of squeezing out all of that water, all of the air, so that we get a nice clean install. So the first thing you see I'm doing, I'm just going to spray the window down, spray that tint, just so that the tint's wet and that this uh, squeegee doesn't stick on the film and uh, catch it and tear it. So we've got a nice bit of friction and movement. Now with a gentle bit of pressure, that I'm just squeezing the water out and squeezing that water out will instantly make that film stick to where it is. But you can also see with my left hand, it's just holding the tint in place. So if I did squeeze a little bit too hard and the film moves, I will be able to feel the film move with my fingers. So that's why I'm keeping my fingers on that tint at all times whilst doing the first squeezes to get rid of, to make sure that it's stuck in place and it's gripped. So there we have it. That is the first go over. I will actually go over it another two times. Um, each time I will press progressively harder. Uh, you know, the first one was just a light squeeze all the way around, and then we press quite hard around the edges. Um, the second one, which I'll do in a minute, uh, I'll give it a few minutes, I'll push a little bit harder again. And then the third time, I'll be trying to press the window out of the actual, out of its, uh, well, yeah, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to push the window out pretty much the third time. But again, each time, make sure that you spray it with water. Um, but yeah, no, look at that. That's spot on, mate. I'm happy with that. Yeah, there's a little bit few... Uh, that's just dirt, isn't it? Yeah. But, you know, it's all around the edges, that dot matrix. You can see that dot matrix is an absolute pain in the arse. There's got to be some sort of trick for them. Yeah, but I'm really happy with that. Really happy. Look at that, mate. Pro tint job. Get your peas out if you want yours doing. That's spot on. That is spot on. WT4, Caravel, tailgate. Looking good, mate. Looking good. Look at that. Anyway... Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it or found it informative. Um, give it a thumbs up. Hashtag Twig will pimp you out. <laughs> uh, and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Stay safe. 
and God bless.